On this episode of All Chiefed Up, head coach Andy Reid talks to Steve Weiss from the NFL Network at the annual league NFL meeting about OBJ and Sky Moore. We're going to talk about all that more, so stick around. What's happening, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to All Chiefed Up. Andy Reid was recently on the microphone at the annual league meeting, and Steve Weiss asked him what he thought about the Odell Beckham Jr. rumors. Mike, what did he have to say about OBJ? Andy said Odell is a good football player and does a nice job, so we'll see how that goes. Steve, it sounded like to me he added some fuel to the fire for all the Chiefs fans that think we're going to go get Odell Beckham, and they think that maybe he hinted at Brett Veach going to get that. Steve, what do you think? I still don't think it's going to happen just because Brett Veach is not going to make that splash. I don't see it happening. I think if they do make some kind of splash, it would be a, a draft day trade or something crazy because the draft's in their hometown and all that. I don't see him sign OBJ just because of the money thing. I, I think he was probably the guy that offered him $4 million and made OBJ scratch his head. That was probably Veach. They're not going to come out and say that. But, of course, Andy Reid likes OBJ. He's a good football player. Uh, other than his injury issues, I mean, OBJ's a freak athlete. He's a great receiver. So I don't know why Andy Reid wouldn't like him. Andy Reid's not going to let on that we are or are not going to sign or go after a certain player. That's never in his forte. He never talks about that kind of stuff. So this doesn't surprise me at all. Hey, to me, this doesn't even sound like Andy Reid did anything different than what he always does. He always says everybody's a nice football player and they do a good job. This is just straight Andy Reid. Uh, he probably does like Odell Beckham Jr. At the same time, he didn't say, looks like we're going to sign him. I don't really understand how Odell would fit in here, to be honest. But I do think Andy Reid would have fun trying to figure out a way for Odell Beckham to come in here. And I believe Patrick Mahomes would like it as well. If he could stay healthy, I think he's a good target and somebody good to have on the field. The problem I have with Odell Beckham Jr., Steve, and I'm sure a lot of Chiefs Kingdom will agree with me, let us know in the comments, it's his attitude. Sometimes he gets a little bit too me, me, me selfish. He does, but that's common with these guys that are really good receivers in the league. A lot of prima donnas out there. Even if we got D-Hop in here, he tends to have those moments as well. It's not as like crazy as OBJ, like just throwing it out there wide open, but he didn't like Kyler Murray in Arizona. That's why he's wanting out of there. And he was very vocal about that. He, You saw him arguing on the sidelines with him. Uh, all these guys got a lot of that that come along with them just because there's a lot of egos involved and things like that. So that's just part of it. But usually Andy Reid and his coaching staff do a really good job at reining those guys in and making them know, hey, this ain't just about you. This is about this team, and it's about winning Super Bowls. Listen, Odell, it's not all about you. Uh, about coach, you. coach, you won't throw me the ball. Coach. I was wide open. You're done. You're done. You're done, Odell. You're done. Andy also said, Steve, that Sky Moore is going to step in and fill in the row of Juju Smith-Schuster and that he expects big things from Sky Moore this season. What do you think about that? What else did he have to say? I mean, he has no one else to throw in there, so it has to be Sky Moore. He's next man up. I don't know if they've really considered Juju Smith-Schuster as, say, a WR1 a lot of people are like, oh, they expect Sky Moore to take over wide receiver one. Kadarius Toney seems like the more obvious choice. I don't think that that's really a thing in the Andy Reid offense. He's talking about that particular role. And I do think Sky Moore can fill it. I think he's got the talent to do so. He's had a year to sit back and watch and see how this goes. And I think Andy Reid's going to throw a lot more responsibility on him in his sophomore year, year as opposed to his rookie year. So I think it, it's what's going to happen. That's what they're planning on doing. Yeah, do you remember the report that came out last year that said Andy Reid does not talk to his rookies? Who said that? Was it... Um, that was LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy. Okay, so I'm just surprised that Andy finally realized that Sky Moore's on the team. He actually met right. him. He actually <laughs> said, hey, we have this guy named Sky Moore. Um, I don't know when he got here. He does maybe. some nice things. Yeah, he does maybe. some nice things. He's going to do good some nice things. player. Listen, Sky Moore, Andy, he, Andy seen him. He's arrived. He's going to come in. He's going to do well this year. Um, I don't know if he's going to get to the level that it would be as if he was to go get a DeAndre Hopkins. Let's be honest. Sky Moore's not no, going to progress that much. Not at all. Year. So, at the same time, he can do things. But again, this is the concern we, we keep having here at All Chiefed Up. You have Kadarius Toney and Sky Moore as your one-two and there's MBS. a lot of uncertainty. MBS, come on. So like you said, the word is uncertainty. You don't really know how this is going to go. You don't know how Sky Moore is going to do in his second year. You don't know that Kadarius Tony is going to be able to stay on the field. Uh, he has a long laundry list of injuries and injury history. He's missed way more games than he's played in his NFL career. MVS, he's MVS. Like you said, uh, he's not going to do anything spectacular, but I would like to see him take a step up. 
I think that he could be a much better receiver than he is if he would just attack the football. He's a big guy. He's got a lot of speed. But when the ball's thrown up to him and it's a contested catch, he waits for that ball to get to him and he gets broken up by DBs. He's got to attack the ball and take more of like a Jamar Chase approach or something like that and get after the ball and, and just be in control. If, if, if he could do that, I think the MVS would, would be a huge asset to the team and it would be totally different than he was last year. I think Patrick wouldn't overlook him as much. Right. So Patrick and MVS had a little bit of a disconnect last year. Kept overthrowing, kept underthrowing. There wasn't the right routes ran a lot of times. Uh, the, the chemistry was off, but maybe it'll get back this year. Who knows? Um, we did see MVS taking to Twitter to tell everybody to stop being GMs, but doesn't he man people on Twitter? I mean, what's going on with this guy lately? I don't know. I actually responded to whoever was talking about that. I think it might have been Lance Twidwell or somebody had posted about it. Like, I'm sure he's a good guy and all that, but this is dumb. And yeah, it was dumb. And I responded, what do you expect from a guy that starts every press conference with, if you don't say my name correctly, I'm not going to answer your question. Like, if your ego's that high, like if you call me Stefan instead of Steven, I'm not going to lose my mind and just not talk to you after that. Like, I don't, I don't have an ego where I think that everyone should know everything about me. I get that vibe from him. And uh, I, I don't know if that's the case, but I get that vibe. And him saying that, uh, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, man. Because, like, I think Carrington Harris said, like, there's been another football game for months. What do you think we're going to talk about? Like, he's got to get real here. He don't need to be the new honey badger. Everybody mispronounces our names. My name's Michael. How, how hard is that? My sixth grade principal, true story, at graduation, called me Michelle in front of the entire class, Steve. It happened, and I've been Stephanie several times. And guess what? I didn't. I didn't get mad about it. I didn't yell at him. I just. I just go on right. because I don't care. I let. I let it roll off of me. Walk of shame. A six-year-old child <laughs> having to having to walk across hope, the stage being called Michelle. This isn't twenty twenty-three. I, I hope you tripped as well, just to you know, and in, insult the injury. I didn't, but I'm going to start telling the story like that. So the details on McCall Harmon's contract dropped today, and boy, was it a doozy! Mike, you want to talk about that? It was a monstrous deal. $1.08 million guaranteed to McCo Hardman. However, he does get a little bonus for each game he is active, $24,000, which is more than I make in almost a year, and then $2 million in incentives between touchdowns, catches, yards, and I'll scratch the playoff part of it because there's no way they're going to the playoffs. So, Steve, what do you think? It's looking like Brett Veach didn't even offer this guy a contract because $1 million guaranteed for a receiver that's played with you know, Patrick Mahomes' his entire career, and he just said, nope, not going to do it. Right. I was going to say, we're not making fun of how much money he signed for, because that's more money than I'm going to make in my lifetime. I'm not scoffing at that. But what I'm scoffing at is that Brett Veach obviously did not try to sign this guy. He did not care, because we could have definitely retained him for that amount of money. No doubt about it. We could have retained Juju for that amount of money. That's what makes me think Brett Veach has a plan, and these guys weren't part of it, and he's moving forward with this plan. I don't think he ever offered him anything. Someone actually asked him that in a press conference. Like, hey, did the Chiefs throw you out an offer? And and McColl dodged it completely and said, I don't know if they did or not, but if they did, it wasn't even enough for my agent to entertain, so I didn't hear about it. That, to me, translated to, no, they didn't. They didn't care. I had to move on. Aaron Rodgers is going to throw to Lazard, or if they sign Randall Cobb, whoever. He's got his security blankets. He's going to throw to them. So all these incentives, 24000 for each game he's active, they're taking a chance on McCo missing eight games out of the year. They're also saying, hey, look, touchdowns, catches, and yards, we know he's not going to throw it to you. We ain't got to pay you for those incentives, and we know the playoff incentive's out, so they're basically giving him a million bucks. They're going to use him for what McCoy does. He's going to be their gadget player. He's going to do their jet sweeps. They're not worried about all that stuff, and I don't know if he realizes it or not, but that's exactly what's going to happen. He actually just posted on Twitter probably 20 minutes ago and said, uh, I came in the league behind Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, and people expected me to be a number one, LOL. And I actually just retweeted it, or I quote tweeted it, and I said, who thought that? And with a bunch of laughing emojis, because no one expected McCole Hardman to be a number one. But you know who could have been a number one, Mike? The guy that Brett Beach passed up to take McCole Hardman, and that's DK Metcalf. And I think that Brett wanted to get this out of his mind, out of his memory. The biggest blunder he's ever had as a GM so far. McCole, Take that memory with you to New York. I have to move on. Yeah, so we just talked about that. Brent Veach's biggest blunder, was it McCo Hardman over DK Metcalf? Or was it Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in the first round over Jonathan Taylor? We talk about that over in our podcast. So wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify or Apple, go do that. If you listen on Spotify, $9.99 per month, you can get extra bonus podcasts. Help support us. 
check out that one. We just released a live draft. So go do that if you love podcasts. So Veach was doing a little bit of work this week. He re-signed Phil Hoskins to a one-year deal, Blake Bell to a one-year deal, and he signed expatriate Byron Cowart to a one-year deal. If you want to know more about that, check out this video that Cole made over on How About Those Chiefs, and you can learn more about that stuff. Make sure to get in our comments, and thanks for subscribing and hitting that bell. I, 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 I,